Hey everyone, thanks for watching Produce Like a Pro. My name is Matt McQueen and I'm really glad to be back on the channel today and to share with you how I record, edit, and reamp electric guitars. This is something that I have been doing for a couple of years now and that I learned from my friend and mentor and studio partner, Matt Goldman. If you're not familiar with Matt, go check out his credits. He's an amazing producer, has done some amazing heavy records and some amazing indie rock records from bands like Copeland and Under Oath. And so you should definitely check him out. And he is who taught me how to do this. The reason that I wanted to do this video is because when I did my first video a couple of weeks ago on the channel, my top 10 tips to be a successful recording studio owner, I talked about owning a DI box and a reamp box. And that was sort of one tip because of the way that I use it to record and edit and reamp guitars. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through that process and I'm gonna show you how I set it up, how I connect it all together, and how I use it inside of Pro Tools. And I'm even gonna record a little guitar riff and show you how I would use it when I'm working with a band. So let's do that. The first thing that you're gonna need is a DI box. I happen to use the Avalon U5, but this is a pretty expensive, pretty pricey DI box. The one thing that is really awesome about the U5 is that it has two output jacks on the back of it, one for line level and one for mic level. So if you want to run it into a microphone preamp, you can come out of the mic level jack. What I always do though is run out of the line level jack and run straight into my audio interface, which is an Antelope Orion 32 HD. So that's going into Pro Tools Ultimate. And what I do is once I'm in Pro Tools, I actually send the DI channel out of its own separate output on the interface. That output then comes out line level and hits a reamping box. And for that, I'm using a radial XAMP. The radial then converts the line level signal into an instrument level signal that the guitar amplifier sees and reacts to the same way it would if a guitar was plugged straight into it. And this is really important. One of the first benefits that you'll get from recording guitars this way is that you can clearly see on your DAW screen the transient information of what the guitar player is playing, which is really difficult when you have a guitar part that's either overdriven or heavily distorted. That information is basically flatlined, it's compressed, it's distorted, and it's not visible really, and it's difficult to edit those kinds of guitars. The second benefit of recording guitars this way is that once your edits are done, you can simply unarm the DI track and re-record the guitar with your edits in place. So by the time you get to the end of the song, all of your editing is done for all of your guitar tracks. And that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. So what I want to do now is jump into Pro Tools and I've got a little just four bar, I guess, chorus riff that you could say that I recorded. And uh, I've already got the drums from Stephen Slate Drums and then I recorded a bass line and the main guitar riff. And I'm going to double it with, uh, with my guitar and show you how I would go through and edit this and then reamp it if the guitar player were actually here in the studio. We're gonna use this guitar here. This is my Gibson Trini Lopez and we've got a 78 Marshall JMP that sounds fantastic and we are going to record this DI track and the electric guitar track and I'll show you how you go through and edit it after the take is done. So here we go. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and jump on in here. Let's look at this performance. And as you can see, looking at the DI, what I was talking about earlier, you can definitely see all of these transients, all this information, and you can see, okay, that one is definitely hitting on the grid. And this one is a little bit late. This one's on time. That one's a little late, late on time all through there. And then that one's a little bit early. So this performance is gonna sound really loose if we tried to just use this. So I'm gonna use Beat Detective. I've got it already pulled up. And we're gonna come right here, zoom in, and I'm gonna skip this little tiny bit of, of uh, noise or whatever was happening. And we're just gonna select all of this. And I'm gonna capture the selection and analyze it. And there you go. It puts those purple lines in there. So if you don't have Pro Tools or Beat Detective, there's gonna be a way to do this in your DAW. Uh, and you could actually go through there and you could just find the transient of every hit and just do it one at a time. This makes it a little bit faster. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and separate that. And then we wanna conform it to the grid. 
And there you go, just like that, it takes that performance and lines it up all nice for us. And then we can go through here and edit smoothing and we can smooth that all out. So now, because we trimmed that noise off, we need to do one more little step. And that's we gotta pull this back right here. We can just delete that and put a nice little fade in to that part of the performance. All right, so now we'll go to the end. I'm gonna pull this fade over too and then try to just clean that up. And then we'll get rid of that, put a fade in here. And we'll do the same thing on this last little bit. You can see comparing the transients, I was a little bit late on all of those hits. So we're gonna come right in there, select all of that part and go back to Beat Detective. Capture that, analyze it and separate it. And then we can conform that to the grid. It's gonna give us an error based on my selections. I'm gonna do just a little workaround and just quantize it, command zero in Pro Tools. And then we will smooth the edit out. And actually I'm gonna get rid of that. And here we go, smooth it on out. All right, now this is where it gets really fun. And this is where this method will benefit you in your productions and with your speeding up your workflow when you are recording guitars. Let's see, let's pull that on out too. Is that now we can unarm the DI track and I gotta turn the amp back on. And because of the way that we have it routed inside of Pro Tools and back out through our reamping box, we can simply re-record this now edited performance of the guitar take. You can also do stuff like this. I wanna just clean this up. We got my little string slide there that doesn't need to happen. So we can make that fade, we can make that a little cleaner. Um, obviously you couldn't see that on the screen because of the way I was zoomed in. And so uh, Beat Detective didn't pick up on that. All right, so let's go do this now with uh, a cleaner, cleaner take with some of these edits in place. Here we go. Okay, so there you have an example of benefit number three of why I like to record this way. You have your guitar performances now really, really tight, and with your edits in place, you can go ahead and re-record the guitar through the amplifier that you were using while the guitarist was making their performance, and by the time you get finished tracking the song, all of the editing for all of the guitars is done, and that's really cool because you don't have to think, did I go back and do that? Do I still need to do that? This workflow really helps you to make sure that as you're going every step of the way through the song, you're not thinking about fixing something later, and it helps you to pay attention better to the details and the minutia of what is being played by the artist that you have playing the guitar parts. So it's as simple as that. And then benefit number four of recording this way that I really, really like is that once your edits are done, you could also stick a pedal in the chain between the reamping box and the guitar amplifier, or you could stick two or three pedals in there and make a little chain and audition uh, different distortion pedals or delays, reverbs, chorus, phaser, whatever it is that you want, and you could record a couple of different takes with the different effects that you want to audition. And that's a really cool thing. You could check that out later when you go to mix the song because maybe you haven't decided yet what's gonna work for the tune or maybe the client is sitting on the couch and they wanna hear what their song sounds like with a couple of different options. And so once you've got all your editing done and you've recorded a couple of those passes with different effects, you could easily flip through different playlists in Pro Tools or different takes in other DAWs and show them what you've done. So it's a really, really handy way to work really, really fast and to make sure all of your editing is done and all of the guitars are played really, really tight together. So there you go, it's as simple as that. If you have any questions at all, I'll be hanging out down in the comments. You can leave those below. I'd be happy to answer those and help anybody get this set up or working for them in their DAW. Until next time, have a great time recording and mixing and I'll see you on the next video. <music>